everybody, it's Peter Rosenthal here again. Hope that all is well and that so far you're enjoying the first couple of online lectures. This is the third of four, third lecture of four, which I'm going to post, all related to statistical quality control. And this one is going to be a sample p-chart exam problem. So this is an old exam problem that, uh, that I think would be a very good review for this, for this topic. So as usual, I've got uh, just a small reminder. It's Peter Rosenthal here. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your spring break still. And, uh, and of course, you're not working too hard. So here's a picture of me, which is in the middle of a run right on the West Island. So just, um, just as a reminder, it is Peter Rosenthal here giving the lecture. Okay, so let's get started. First, uh, the first point is to review the question itself. So let's go through it. The question is as follows. Using a database software package, 12 data entry clerks at ARCO key in thousands of insurance records each day. A sample of 100 records entered by each clerk was carefully examined to make sure they contain no errors. The results are given in the following table. You see the table? With the clerk number and the records with errors. Determine the three sigma control limits for the appropriate control chart and plot the control limits and relevant information on the chart. Comment on the chart and what reasonable assumptions you can make about the performance of the clerks. Okay, so the first thing we notice is that the um, what they're looking for is a control chart three sigma with three sigma rather control limits. So what does that mean? It means that z equals three with the formulas that we have. Second thing you notice is that the type of data that we have in this chart is attribute kind of data. So we see here the number of errors, entry errors, that each clerk has as he's entering data. So you can see here, with respect to the problem, they talk about sample of 100 records, 100 records right here, for each clerk. And for example, clerk number one out of 100 records, six has got some errors. So the question is, what kind of chart do we use? Because that these, this data is attribute, we want to use a p-chart. As opposed to the previous examples, where we had variable data, if you remember the numbers were like a 0.126 and a 0.127, very much variable kind of looking data, this data is attribute, where it's how many are good versus bad kind of data. Okay, so far so good. So the next thing we notice is that how many samples do we have? We have 12 samples, there's 12 clerks, so we'll just take a look at that. There's, there's 12 clerks, and for each of the clerks, we have the number of records with errors. So keep in mind also that we have, for each clerk, a sample of 100. So what's the sample size? It's 100. So remember, we want to distinguish between the sample size, which is 100, and the number of samples, which in this case is 12. Okay, I think that covers all the information we need to solve the problem. Let's go on to the next step over here, where... I worked out the math to the problem. And what we do to calculate p bar, so of course this is a p chart. Remember the formulas, here's the formulas right here. I'll just uh, highlight these just for the sake of a review. Here's the formulas for the p charts. And what information do we need for the upper control limit and lower control limit is of course the sample size. This three over here is because we want the three sigma limits. And what we're missing is the p bar here for the p charts. Okay, we'll just erase that, and let's calculate the p-bar. So the way it works to calculate the p-bar is, p-bar is what? The expected fraction of records with errors. So given all the samples that we have, what's the expected, or the average if you like, the average fraction of records with errors? And what we do is we just add up the data here. We're adding up the data that we have from the, uh, the question, and we divide by 12 because there's 12 samples, so we take an average and it's 100 because the sample size is 100. So p bar, to calculate that, we add up all of the data that we have here. Let's just highlight that again. So we add this up, we take the average, which is why it's divided by 12, and it's a sample size of 100 divided by 100. So if we do the math, we get a p bar of 0 0.0425. And just a reminder that our sample size is 100 in accordance with the problem. Just as a reminder, if you take a look at this data, this data corresponds exactly with 
this data right here in the problem. Okay, to the mound. So let's keep going. To calculate the upper control limits and the lower control limits, we plug in the numbers that we have. Everything we we need, we now have right here. And, uh, and you can see that our upper control limit, if we do the calculation, is 0 0.103. And the lower control limit, if we do the math, is negative 0 0.018. So one of the key points here that I'd like to highlight, I'll just clarify that, when you have a P chart, when you have a P chart, the lowest lower control limit you can have is zero. So if ever you do the math and you see you get a negative number, just set the lower control limit to zero. If you have a positive number, then just keep that number. So let's say if this would have been plus 0 0.018, the answer is 0 0.018. But anything with the negative, the lowest you can have is zero. So keep the zero. Okay, to the moment. So now we have our upper control limit and we have our lower control limit. So we can now draw the chart. So let's draw the chart. Here it is. I drew it. And in fact, if you can see here, this is actually from an old exam. So I actually have the answers from the exam itself. And the three most important labels that we want to put on the chart are, of course, the upper control limit. There's your point 103. You want to put your lower control limit. There's your zero. And you also want to plot your P bar right here that we calculated, the point 0425. So we calculated that right here. Okay, so that's kind of our center line. Even though it's not perfectly centered because we set this guy to zero, we want to definitely show the label for the upper control, lower control, and the P bar on the chart. Okay, so I'll just clear that. The axis of the chart is clerk number in this case, so there's 12 clerks, 12 samples, 12 clerks, and on the y-axis, it's proportion of records with errors. So what are we plotting here? We are plotting, okay, these points here, what are we plotting? We're plotting, if we just go back to the problem, we're plotting 6 divided by 100 and 5 divided by 100 because there are sample size of 100 here. And 0 divided by 100, of course, is 0. And that's why you see over here, we're plotting 0.06. 0 0.05, and there's your zero, and so on, and so on. I'll just clear that. So we're literally plotting our P's divided by the sample size, which is the P divided by 100. Be careful because if the sample is, let's say it would have been 200, you have to divide by 200 and so on. So you, divi you divide your P's by the sample, and you plot your chart. And you can see right away that clearly this sample is out of limit, out of control. This clerk number 11, out of control, and this one, number 3, is right on the limit. Okay, to Lamont, so there's no question that this process is out of control, and there's a couple of things we can conclude. So if we go back to the question, the question is stating, comment on the chart and what reasonable assumptions you can make about the performance, about the performance of the clerks. Okay, so remember the context of the problem, this is about clerks, and they are entering data. So each clerk is keying in data. Okay, they key in the clerks, key in thousands of insurance records each day. So we're kind of, we're measuring to see how well these clerks are doing. So if we just go back to our chart, we can see there's definitely issues here. And the conclusions that I've got, or the comments that I've got is, first of all, performance of the clerks, definitely unsatisfactory, because the process is out of control. We saw that sample number 11 is beyond the limit and sample number 3 is right on the limit. So sample 11 as we said is beyond the upper limit. Why is it on the upper limit? Well it's a bit subjective here but you can give a pretty good guess. One idea is that perhaps this clerk needs more training when keying in the record. So this clerk, if you just take a look at the data, uh, clearly is somewhat worse than the other clerks, and you can see it even better here. So clearly this, on average, he's keying in data at, uh, at a much lower ability. He's actually out of spec here. So he's out of control. He's causing the process to be out of control. And uh, just one idea, maybe more training for that clerk could improve things. That's one idea. Uh, sample number three, if we take a look at this. So what's interesting is that sample number three is on the limit. It's almost out of control, but if you think about it, He's got no errors. It's, it's zero. Zero errors. 
and you might think it's a good thing, but maybe it's because he's too slow. So maybe he's got zero errors because he's going through fewer per day records. So again, this is kind of speculation, it's a bit subjective, but just the idea here is that sample number three is on the limit. Maybe it's because he's too slow. Maybe because he's too slow. And suggestion, maybe we want to check the output of clerk number three to confirm if indeed he's too slow. Maybe it's acceptable to have one or two errors per clerk after spending a whole day of going through all the data. So that's an idea of how you would interpret a chart and how you would create the p-chart, of course. And as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, send me an email and, uh, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks again.